Hey guys, we are Mike and Leanne of the Dry Campers. We travel the country doing solar and lithium upfits on RVs. And this week, we got a little something different. Yeah, it was a re-upfit. How's that? A re-upfit. <laughs> so stay tuned and see what we've got coming up. Hello and thank you for joining me today. Today actually is a little bit different of a project. It's a 2018 uh, Airstream Classic Limited 33FB. Um, I have worked on one of these several months ago in Texas, if you remember the farm videos. Um, but this one uh, was installed by a different installer and I was asked to go through it and uh, the, the uh, main problem is whenever they turn on the ACs from inverting, the system shuts down after about 15 minutes. So I'm um, going to do kind of a quick walkthrough, point some things out that I've noticed, and then uh, um, please don't ask who the installer was. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I'm also not going to show the owners. Um, I'm only going to show the Airstream, and um, I'm just here to get it working again so that the customer's happy. So yeah, let's let's get to it. Okay, so we've got six batteries total in this battery bank. Uh, in this one, we have a battery bank of four in under the bed. Uh, this is a front bedroom version with the uh, tipping up of the bed. And the first thing I see is that all of the batteries uh, come off of uh, both legs, positive and negative, come off the far side. You should have one of either the positive or negative coming off of this side and then same thing opposing on the other side. So that's the first thing I notice. And then there's also a pair of batteries in here, which are also the exact same thing, um, just paralleled and then they both pull off of the same side. So we'll have to make that change. I'm, Probably going to move these two batteries into the battery bank so that we'll have all six in here. I'm going to take up um, this flooring and this is another thing. Yes, they're in with angle iron, but not anyhow, they're, they're not fixed in here. I can literally pull them up. So uh, I've got to get them strapped in. And then uh, on the inside, I'll go into more detail on things. But let's get the battery bank wired correctly first, and then we'll go inside and look for some more stuff. Okay, so. I uh, got the battery bank undone. Sorry for the lawnmower. Nothing I can do about it. Um, got the battery bank undone. Got it moved over. Now I can get uh, down behind the wall of this this fake wall right here. And um, I see some things and I'm like, what is that? And more importantly, why is that AC wire have DC connected to it? So let's just do some more investigating, try and figure out what's going on. Also, I haven't seen any shutoff switches for this uh, system, so uh, those are going to have to be inserted. Um, hopefully, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but. Um, you have to have the ability to shut the batteries off and right now I am not seeing that anywhere so anyhow um, the DC power panel is hanging out shut hanging out and that's why oh wow really the shunt literally has is just connected to DC. It has no power running through it whatsoever. 
so it's not not wired properly at all um, I have to definitely gonna have to make some changes here so anyhow let me uh, let me dig in some more I have a feeling that uh, the DC power sides all that's messed up and um, uh, the AC power sides probably going to be perfect I'm pretty sure that an electrician did this install and um, you have to know both AC and DC to do these systems you can't just wing it um, everything was fairly protected I mean as far as that goes he has a fuse on the system but uh, more importantly the fuse is over at the multiplus is inside the RV all of this here all the battery bank um, going into this uh, distribution block um, coming um, it runs uh, under the RV into this box which has the other two batteries but those wires should they rub and scrape through that's a direct connection with no uh, no fuse protection on it granted Battleborn batteries are good at uh, you know the the BMS's have um, short circuit protection on them but if it's just a rub um, the batteries aren't going to shut off they're going to think that that's a draw uh, a draw of power and um, so that's that's not great and then um, the battery posts with the electrical cable on it the the white and the black wire right there um, that that's also concerning uh, I have a feeling that that's probably the solar uh, coming off of the uh, MPPT which uh, if you read in the MPPT manual, it says do not use this kind of wire. You have to use the fine copper, not the, the uh, basically household electrical. You need to use like car stereo or welding wire um, to connect. Um, the reason why is because when you do the connections with that kind of wire, not enough of the wire connects to the terminal, and then uh, you end up heating the wire up and not in this instance you, they don't have they only have a thousand watts on the roof but i mean if you were pushing two or three thousand watts through a wire um it's going to heat up a lot um if you're you know drawing a lot of power off of the system so um the intentions were good but um learn learn fully learn dc power before you tackle this kind of stuff so Let's do some more investigating and get this system put back together. Okay, so just did a little bit more investigating. So this black wire goes to the shunt and it, it's just wired all wrong. But this two gauge goes over to the DC power panel, not also not fused. Um, putting full 600 amps of uh, batteries into the DC power panel. So, gotta add a fuse for that. Um, and a shutoff for that. So, uh, you gotta be able to turn the power off if if you're uh, storing the coach or if uh, somebody's working on it. Right now, there's no way to shut any power off whatsoever. Um, other than just turning off the multipluses, but then you still have 600 amps of power going to all the DC side and the entire coach. Um, it's not a good idea. back on the Airstream after some testing uh, we've come to the conclusion that the wire 
which is QC battery cable, two odd gauge SAE with two uh, uh, denotations and then a foot marker. We also have stamped in it certified full two aught AWG copper stranded minimum 0.422 pounds copper per foot. So um, yeah, I've never seen anybody say that on a piece of wire unless they're lying. So um, I don't know exactly what's in this wire. If it's tin or some sort of copper um, it definitely looks like copper but uh, this is not as heavy as this and they are within uh, they're very close to being the same length this one is a, just a teeny bit longer I'm gonna I don't have a food scale to be able to measure it but I mean it's uh, even with the double jacket this one is lighter okay so these are the positive and negative power distribution blocks and these are, I literally just cut the things off because I didn't have an Allen wrench that was this big uh, to be able to remove them. And if you look, this is how they were stuck in there. And the owner of the RV was talking about complaining of things were getting hot and stuff like that. So, but shoving these screws up in here and just tightening a bolt down on it, that only allows continuity. It doesn't allow amperage. Um, and what I mean by that is there's not enough surface area of these two connecting to this block and then distributing out to all of the pieces of equipment. The rest of the problem with this is these two were coming from a four bank and a two bank battery banks. So you had 600 amps of power coming through here um, if, if it would let it. But that's, that's what these things are, was the uh, power distribution blocks, which these are for electrical. This isn't for DC power. So uh, now I have to put uh, pull all the batteries back out again, then replace all of the wiring, um, two gauge, uh, battery cable, all the way into the multi pluses, and um, with that, I will uh, do another test as soon as I'm done, and then uh, uh, go on to the rest of the system. So, just going to show you all the patches that I had to put in because of all of these freaking holes that this guy put. Okay, so, combiner box, um, four holes, rivet in the middle of the thing, I have no idea why, uh, large hole, and then two small holes, that's where the uh, original wiring went down. I still am going to seal around the edge of all this wire clamp holder oops I gotta get that one fixed uh, sealed up another wire clamp uh, random hole box hole um, what's that thing called uh, combiner box and this one here is a junction box um, there's another one right there there are two more right there, and just under the edge of there, there is another one. Um, there's an existing combiner box there. I believe that was factory. That's going to stay. Um, and then there's several more up there. I'll video those. Um, I've already videoed a bunch of them. Uh, let me switch over here. Look up under here. So... This is all cleaned out and ready for panel mount. There's the other one at. Uh, right there. So that one I have to clean yet. To put that panel down. That's the rear panel. 
that one's already clean, that one's already clean, that one's already clean. So, let me get these wrapped up. Get these on before it gets completely dark. Okay, so in this system, the things that I changed were a combined battery bank. Um, I also added fuses, shutoffs. I had to change out all the battery wiring. I had to change out all of the solar panel mounting wiring. I had to remount all of the solar panels. I had to remove all of the combiner boxes and junction boxes from the roof. There were four of each. In my installs, I only use one combiner box, whereas in this system, he had four combiner boxes that led to four junction boxes. And then it, long story short, from the furthest panel to the MPPT, the wire run was at least 40 feet. Yeah. And doesn't that mean Okay, so you guys, like, obviously he's the guru, so I have to ask questions too. I've learned a lot, but I still have to ask questions. <laughs> so, but that means that there's a loss in the wire, right? Yes. Because it's so long. So after some quick calculating, uh, 8 AWG, and actually after thinking about it, it was closer to 48 feet because it was 20 feet over, 20 feet back, 8 feet from the roof down. So about 48 feet. Uh, the panels run at about 18 volts. You get a wire loss of about 16%. Wow. So, at, in perfect sunlight, he the best that he could ever do is 840 watts. Out of the 1,000. Out of 1,000 watts of panels. Sheesh. Yeah, that's, that's really not good. So, the reason that this system would shut down after 15 minutes of trying to run it before Mike got there to diagnose this was a, a couple of reasons. Not only was it the split battery bank, he didn't he didn't wire the positive and the negatives correctly. Mm -hmm. um, the district the DC wasn't even it just wasn't right altogether, yeah. right? Because of the lack of surface area in the distribution blocks, the it was causing a lot of heat, which caused the current to not flow. So there were, you know, not only these things, but there were so many different things, including the incorrect wire. Not only was the battery cable or the battery wiring not to actual two watt, but the, uh, the panels were actually ran with electrical wiring, which, you know, again, wouldn't allow the power to actually flow. So in checking the programming of the multi pluses, both of them, it was actually programmed correctly so but you would ask you know why why would it shut down when you don't have the ability for current to flow the voltage drops so the multiplus was seeing volt voltages going down below 12 volts because the current couldn't flow the system would reach its critical point and the whole thing would shut off so Let's skip straight to installation. This particular installation, the factory beads of where the gutter meets the, the curve of the roof, some of that was actually cut back all the way down to the aluminum. Um, all of that had to be taken out. I, I literally had to take every single piece off of the roof, all of the wiring, all of the junction boxes, all of the combiner boxes, and patch, oh, also all of the wire holders, the um, little steel wire holders. Yeah. Um, I had to take all of that off, go and repair 
every single hole first, then rewire it all with uh, PV wire. And then uh, I used uh, two gauge coming in from the roof to keep the wire loss to, you know, as small as possible. Then put all the panels, well, clean, 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 clean some more, clean. Um, there were uh, spots where things were mounted right over top of the of the the green mold that was there so of course nothing stuck um it it did he even use sealant okay so the order that he did things was he went up on the roof and he mounted and installed everything and then came back and tried to caulk it after the fact so there was no sealant between the body of aluminum and the feet and we always of do that anything whenever you mount something just look it up I mean you'll find hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube you put your glob of stuff down you you put your thing on it whatever you're mounting I say thing thing means anything <laughs> and then you put your screw in it and then you seal the screw it's that simple you can't come back after the fact and reach under a, a panel that's this far off of the ground, off of the surface and try and seal all the way around the foot. It's just not possible. Um, it was just a poorly done installation. The point of this video is not to throw other people under the bus. The point of this video is that you can't... This is what not to do. Yeah, this is what not to do. And also, do your research on who... Is installing your system mm -hmm. yes look the person up see if they have any proof of install see if they have we any have references we have I was gonna say we have tons of references for you guys um, you know this is why we also do our channel but we have not only do we have tons of references but we know that our vendors are signing off on us as well yes we also have vendor references so yes. um, that's another Avenue uh, if somebody's really wants to know if if and what we do so yeah and that's not to toot our own horn that's just mm -hmm. saying where we are professional at what we do mm -hmm. cool yeah thanks guys for joining us on this video uh, we hope you found it informative um, it was very disheartening to have to go through this and I know for the client but I know that the, the clients happy now <laughs> I haven't heard anything from them I, I mean it's just yeah yeah so smash the like button hit that dingy bell ringy thingy and we'll catch you on the next install we've got a um 19 sorry 2018 <laughs> 19 <laughs> that's so silly i'm two decades late on that one um so anyhow it's